I learned that you should never leave your phone unattended with booktubers. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and I love to talk about books. To begin with, an apology. <laughs> I look and sound rough because the Rona finally got me. I have COVID. Um, I'm fine. I'm just a bit snotty, stuffed up and a bit breathless. Um, but yeah, <laughs> this probably isn't going to be my most coherent or um, attractive looking <laughs> video. But today I wanted to jump on and do a video which combines um, my booktube bestie book haul <laughs> and also my Dewey's 24 hour readathon TBR. So as you might have seen, if you um, follow Ange at Ange's Book Chatter or Amy at Booktube with Amy, the three of us and Simon, formerly of Booktube with Simon, had a wee day out um, book shopping and just generally having some fun over the weekend. Clearly I'm not a real booktuber because I took no videos, no footage the entire day. Call yourself, call yourself a booktuber. I was just far too busy laughing. Um, we walked the length of Glasgow. We hit up um, bookshops and charity shops and well, Simon nearly killed someone in foot by dropping a book on them from a high height. Uh, we indulged in a little bit of guerrilla bookish warfare <laughs> by hiding the books of problematic authors. Um, and of course, the piece de resistance, um, Angie's entire reason for coming up to Scotland <laughs> in the first place was to see a lorry parked down the side of the Barrowlands. Jokes, she actually came to see the Shoggy Bane mural that's behind that lorry. <laughs> We also had um, an amazing meal where I learned that you should never leave your phone unattended with booktubers. But what I lack in footage, I definitely made up for in books. I had um, a couple of Waterstones gift vouchers that I got for Christmas, so I used those and I picked up a couple of charity shop bargains as well. So I thought I would do a wee haul. So, my Waterstones haul. Um, first, I bought some physical copies of books that I read as net galleys, really loved, and so I wanted copies for my shelves um, just to look pretty, but also because I will probably reread these at some point. So, the first one was, of course, Before My Actual Heart Breaks by Tish Delaney. If you watch my channel, you will 100% have heard me talk about this. Why haven't you read it yet? Um, but if you're new here, this book is heartbreaking and beautiful and more people need to read it. I may have done a bit of reorganising of Waterstones and um, displays to move us into a more prominent location. Um, so this book, we meet Mary as a teenager in troubled strewn Northern Ireland in the 1970s. She's got a cold, abusive home life thanks to a mother whose re only real concern is that other people see her as being super pious. Um, so navigating um, segregation and military occupation for a chance to snog her boyfriend at the bus stop, Mary dreams of flying away and having a different life. But when she finds herself pregnant and unmarried, Mary's dreams come crashing down um, with a definite bump. She's forced by her mother, by the judgment of society and by the crushing religious control of the time um, and finds herself on a, on a very different path. This book follows her over the next 25 years where she settles with her lot but really feels that she's missed the chance to live the life that she really wants. This book really delves into the damage that can be caused when someone is made to feel small and worthless, how they can be caged in by um, a lack of self-worth and put up walls to protect themselves um, from being rejected by others. You know, it's about how like the negativity inside our heads can blinker us to the opportunities that lie right at our feet. I thought it was stunning, wonderful, 
love it so glad to finally have a physical copy of it and then next I picked up Scabby Queen by Kirsten Innes which is about Cleo Campbell who is a one-hit wonder and political activist who dies by suicide the day after turning 50 and this story is um, the story of her life as told through the eyes of those who knew her whether they loved or hated her so it spans from her upbringing between two very different separated parents in the midst of minor strikes and folk music in Scotland at the time of um, Thatcherite politics through her brief fame as this beautiful young pop star with um, a political anti-poll tax rally cry to her messy adult life struggling with the injustices of the world around her and trying to hold on to both her music and her sense of self. I really enjoyed this. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that goes without saying, why would I have bought it? Um, save for this one, which is Summer Water by Sarah Moss. Um, this is set over the space of one day and it's told through um, seemingly unrelated snippets of the lives of different holiday makers in a lockside holiday park in Scotland. It's miserable, it's raining all day and everyone is stuck inside. And interspersed with these slices of human life are vignettes of um, the nature that surrounds them and how it's being affected by the persistent rain. It's really unclear where this book is going until it gets there and I'm not going to spoil that. Um, it would be an absolute tragedy to ruin this book. What I will say is that the ending left me a bit shell-shocked and totally in love with Sarah Moss and I've bought and read other books by her since. Then finally I have Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan which is a story of Jimmy and his friend Tully which is told over two time periods. So first we meet the boys in like the mid to late 80s, we follow them and their friends as they travel from Ayrshire in Scotland to Manchester for a music festival and we get to know them in all their kind of political, aspirational <laughs> and pure gallus ways. Um, the second half of the book we meet the boys again but now they are in their midlife and Tully calls Jimmy to deliver some tragic news. I don't think I've read, um, a, you know, in another book, such a beautiful male friendship um, before and I really loved that that was at the core of this story. It's funny, it's sad and I just really love this. <laughs> then I picked up some others that I haven't read yet. So this one has been on my TBR for a while and I hope I'm right when I say that it seems like um, the female version of Graham Armstrong's The Young Team, although without gangs, <laughs> because when I said that to Ange and Amy, they also bought copies for us to buddy read. So if it's crap, it's on me. Um, but this is Duck Feet by Ellie Percy, and it's the story of a girl and her friends through their high school years in Paisley, which is just outside of Glasgow. Um, it's set in the mid noughties and it kind of navigates through um, lots of things that are typical, particularly in a working class, high school, drugs, teen pregnancy, bullying, but also focuses a lot on friendship. And I love reading about female friendship, Scotland, <laughs> coming of age, like this just sounds like it's going to be great. And then I got a book that I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm going to love um, because everyone else who's talked about it has raved about it, except the weirdos who were judging the fiction Octofinal for the Booktube Prize, because this didn't make it to the quarterfinals. But this is Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Um, <clears throat> so this is about a unique parenting situation which arise, arises when Ames, who has detransitioned from being a trans woman, he then gets his boss pregnant and contacts his ex, Reese, to join them in raising the baby. That just sounds like it covers well, a novel situation, um, but also I don't think I've read any trans fiction 
um, so I'm looking forward to um, learning a bit more of the trans experience through this novel which is always a good thing and then my next book is I think a bit of a love it or hate it book um, this is no one is talking about this by Patricia Lockwood I think it's written quite oh, it doesn't actually look I'm sure someone said it was written quite experimentally um, and that it's something to do with a social media influencer I don't really know <laughs> I've heard people talking about it a lot and the blurb doesn't really give much away either but I am curious it says this is a story about a life lived in two halves it's about what happens when real life collides with the increasing absurdity of a world accessed through a screen it's about living in a world that contains both an abundance of proof that there is goodness empathy and justice in the universe and a deluge of evidence to the contrary so <laughs> it's not long um it's been shortlisted for different prizes let's give it a go and then some non-fiction that still has a receipt in it <laughs> um I've been interested in this book since it came up in the booktube prize list and I think it did get into the quarterfinals um, but this is Islands of Abandonment by Cal Flynn and it's about what happens when humans abandon places and um, time and nature are allowed to kind of take them back. I love shit like this. I'm obsessed with things like um, Abandoned Scotland where they probably not legally, um, access abandoned buildings and um, show the decay that's been going on, partly because abandoned buildings are creepy. <laughs> um, partly because I think it's really interesting to see um, into these places that have, you know, they've sadly been left unloved and abandoned and imagine them in their heydays or why they've been abandoned. And then also partly because you know as this book is focused on it's fascinating to see nature and decay impact on a building um, once humans are taken out of the equation so I'm really looking forward to geeking out with this and then finally for my new book purchases a bit of a wild card The Lamp Lighters by Emma Stonex um, I've heard about this book a few times and something is drawing me to it. So this is about um, three lighthouse keepers in the 1970s who disappear from their post which is miles away from shore. The door to the lighthouse is locked from the inside and the table is still set for a meal. Um, so then I think like 20 years later a writer meets the women that these men left behind, I think it must be their wives, um, and tries to get to the truth. It's a spooky mystery, just sounds like a, a good time. So yes, please. And then I have the books I bought in the charity shops. Um, all these are books that I haven't read before. Um, the first of which is uh, Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney. I don't think she's related to Sally. This one has been on my radar for like literally years. It's about 85 year old Lillian who goes for a walk around Manhattan on New Year's Eve in 1984. As she walks, she reflects on her life and the things that she's been through, but also the city around her as it's changed through the decades. So simple, but that sounds like such a good premise. And 1984 was the year I was born, so I don't know, I'm a little bit drawn to it because of that probably. Next is um, Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. I think a lot of people have read this, but briefly, it's about a family who are staying in an isolated holiday home in like Long Island, I think, uh, when a couple turn up claiming that they own the house and they need to stay there because there's been this massive um, power outage that's hit the city. But with the internet and phone lines down, the family have no way of verifying whether the couple own the place or their story, so are they safe? And apparently this is quite unnerving um, and it makes a commentary on race and class, which you know I love. So I think this could be quite a good one. And then finally, um, a novel by Damien Barr, whose memoir, Maggie and Me, I utterly adored um, earlier this year. This is You Will Be Safe Here and it's set in South Africa where Willem is 
being sent to like a summer camp by his mother and her boyfriend to make a man of him uh, when they fear that he is too soft. The land on where the camp is held, 100 years earlier a woman had to fight for her son as British troops arrived and somehow these two stories are linked and secrets are uncovered. I'm so excited to see what Damien Barr can do in fiction because like I said I absolutely loved his memoir. So I'm very pleased with my haul. I'm so happy that I got to spend time with some simply wonderful people who, you know, they are exactly as you see them on booktube, Amy and Ange. We had such a good time. I really hope it wasn't a one-off um, and we get to do it again soon. See, Agnes! Agnes! <laughs> no, I meant Agnes Bain, you pillow. Put your hand down. <laughs> So this video is getting kind of long, but it is Dewey's 24 hour readathon today. So I want to do just a quick TBR. If you don't know, Dewey's is a 24 hour readathon that happens twice, sometimes more a year. Everyone kicks off at the same time. So for those of us in the UK, it is 1 p.m. today. And you just read as much as you can for 24 hours. There are sprints and games and all sorts across social media. So I will link the main places that I can think of in the description below. It doesn't matter how much you read and I think this time around I'll probably not do um, as much as I usually manage seeing as I am feeling a bit ropey um, but we'll see. I might vlog but I mean I'm trying to isolate in my room away from my family as much as possible so I'm not <laughs> sure how interesting that will be but again We'll see. Um, but what am I planning on reading? Well, I've got a couple of books I want to read for Eurovision of Thorn, or more than a couple of books, um, in which I'm kind of taking part in that on the sidelines um, of that readathon, which is um, so Eurovision of Thorn is a readathon where you try to get points by reading books from countries taking part in the Eurovision Song Contest. I'll link the um, announcement video in the description below. Um, I'm going to properly take part in it next year. I'm kind of dabbling this year. But um, so I've got Little Infamies by Panos Konesis, um, which is a short story collection for the country of Greece. All the stories are set in one Greek village and focus on the people who live there. So that could be nice to dip in and out of during the 24 hours. Then I've got Diary of a Young Naturalist by Dara McAnulty. This is my UK book. <laughs> I don't think it will get me many points because everyone hates us. The UK never does well in the Eurovision Song Contest these years. Um, but I always need an audiobook for Dewey's anyway. And this is one of my booktube prize assignments. Um, this is the diary of Dara, who uses his love of the natural world as a way to cope whilst living with autism and suffering bullying and things like that. Then I've picked a book for Sweden, which I haven't actually got out yet. And I can't see it here. Is it on the other side? I'm not gonna. <laughs> it's Frederick Brackman's Brit Marie was here, is here. Um, <laughs> which is about Brit Marie, um, who is a bit of um, an interfering busybody. And after her husband cheats on her, she has to carve out a new life for herself and try to find a place to belong. I've not read any Frederick Bachman yet, but his books are always doing the rounds. So this will be a good um, opportunity to try it. I also have the final part of my audio book, which I may or might not finish um, by the time this video goes up. Uh, this is the book I picked for Ukraine, which is Museum of Abandoned Secrets by Oksana. Zabushko. Um, this is about uh, a female journalist who's trying to uncover the truth about a female resistance fighter um, who was active back in the 1940s, whilst also coming to terms with the death of her friend in more current times, and also the, the political landscape of Ukraine, which is impacting on her job as a journalist. I really enjoyed this despite it being a whopping 30 hours on audiobook and um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. If I have time, which I doubt <laughs> I will, um, I might throw in a few shorter books too, like I've, I've got 
grief is the thing with feathers and things like that um but like i keep saying we'll see this is a laid back no pressure dewies for me this time around so whatever i get read is a good time are you taking part in dewies or your vision of thorn i would love to hear what your books are, what your plans are, how you're getting on, all that sort of good stuff. So let me know in the comments below. And um, <laughs> I really want to just go and lie in my bed for a bit now. So I'm going to finish up here. Um, so until next time, bye. <laughs> <laughs>